What is up, people? We're back. We had an absolute wild 13-game slate yesterday. We will go over that. But first, we're back for the MLB DFS breakdown for June 29th. It's going to be a fun one. It's only five games, but we have some real interesting uh, decisions to make. And before we get into it, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to all our videos. And if you have not already, please come join us at LineStar. $29.99 gets you access to all of our props and all of our DFS. We also have some nice promo offers available. If you are a new customer to FanDuel, Thrive, Sleeper, or Underdog, you can get a couple months up to six months free. So just go through the link on our website or on the apps. Um, the link is also available on the apps. So you can get it there. Now, let's get into the fun. Uh, we're we're going to start with a nice rundown of yesterday's slate that was absolutely crazy. Uh, look at the perfect lineups for FanDuel and DraftKings as well as the winners of both contests. And then we are going to get into some pitcher ownership for the night slate and some stacks. All right. Now, for the DraftKings lineup, perfect lineup, no surprise, Dane Dunning, Domingo Herman, uh, both were absolutely incredible. Dunning was almost a complete game, racked up 10Ks, just a studly game. And then Herman, I... Did not see this coming. I could have never told you in a million years that he would be the next perfect game, the 24th in MLB history. What a game for him. Congratulations. As far as hitting wise, this slate was just out of control. So many runs were scored, and but yet two pitchers, both lower middle price, just went nuts. So the you know the perfect lineup is very high scoring. MLB is 350 or DraftKings 350 on FanDuel is like 420. Uh, we did have a 2-2 stack with Cleveland and Cincinnati here in the perfect lineup. And then the winning lineup, we had Snell and Dunning. Surprisingly, Domingo Herman was not in the winning lineup. Cannot believe that, but it did happen. But this person just kind of nailed some hitters here. So had a three, four, had a four-man Cleveland stack. Um, had one White Sox, had Mookie Betts. Oh, there's the fifth man Cleveland. So five-man Cleveland. And then it looks like three one-offs. He had, you know, just a pretty incredible lineup here to put it all together Nailed some one-offs, had solid pitchers, Snell, you know, 10Ks, Dunning, 10Ks. What a night. I just cannot believe that Herman wasn't in the winning lineup. Let's see if he was in one of the second. Yep, he was in the second uh, place lineup with 15% owned. You would have really thought somebody would have put it together with a Cleveland stack and uh Herman that would have been enough to put it together but Josh Engelman here he had this zero from Jimenez that just made it so he did not advance did or did not get first uh but congratulations to the winners Royal Payne taking home 50k what a lineup uh you know we've talked a lot about on DraftKings at least the format of your lineups this is the first game or first slate in three diff three slates now that wasn't a five two one, but it still was a five man stack with three one offs. So stacking once again still made it uh, happen was still the winning lineup construction. Now let's get into the FanDuel perfect lineup. <laughs> no surprise, Domingo Orman leads the way, and then we got a two man Cl uh, Cleveland stack. And then a bunch of one-offs here, and that is no surprise, just because of some of these outlier matchups or line or scores that we had. Savala, you know, hitting two two uh, home runs out of the catcher spot at two K, 
Josh Bell going nuts, Altuve going nuts, Mookie Betts, uh, TJ for Cincinnati, uh, <laughs> Garcia, Castellanos, all these guys just had incredible games. And you could fit them all under the salary cap. So you know this perfect lineup was going to be crazy. And let's put it up to how it looks here uh, against the winning lineup. So no surprise, Herman only 13% owned as the winning lineup. And then we have a two-man Cincinnati and one-offs over that. So, you know, the last couple of days on FanDuel's, it's been smaller. Two, two, two-man stacks, one two-man stacks and one-offs. Um, but it's still pretty much stack-related. And I think you could have got to this lineup even, you know, slightly more stacked. He doesn't have Josh Bell in here. Josh Bell would have made this, you know, lineup a lot better. So there's definitely uh, still reasons to be stacking on FanDuel. And you can't just look at one or two slates to make your decision if you want to stack or not. Stacking is definitely the way to go. And if we look over, you know, some of the perfect lineup data, 75% of the lineups that win here have a uh, four-man stack in them. Or 75 of the, sorry, 75 percent of the perfect lineups over the last 31 periods. So, oh, sorry, that was for a two-game slate. Um, yesterday was 13. So, all right, see so that changes it. So, 87 percent have a two-man stack. 28 percent have three-man. But now remember too, this is for the perfect lineup. We aren't trying to get the perfect lineup. We're just trying to beat everybody else. So I think the way to do that, to make it a little easier to get the right lineup, is to have a stack. Yes, maybe you lose a little bit of upside, but you don't need to be perfect. Like as we saw, this perfect lineup's 420. The winning lineup was 310, 110 point difference. Like that's such a huge difference and it is so hard to just pick all one-offs to go nuts. So that's really why we need to be stacking and continue to do that. All right, so now let's get into uh, the projections, get into some ownership, and we'll start over on good old DraftKings. As always, I'll move myself over here. I'll make myself a little smaller. Um, all right, so highest owned, Max Scherzer clearly looks like the best kind of pitching option as a whole. He is super expensive though at 11K. And I know everybody's going to say he's been inconsistent this year, blah, 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 blah. But honestly, he's been pretty good. He got shelled his first start back from suspension against the Yankees. But outside of that, he's been really good for over a month. Over his last five starts, 3.39 FIP, 29% K rate. He's really looking like the Scherzer of old. So I wouldn't be scared off uh, from using him. He is expensive. He is high owned. But pitching on this slate is not very good. And there's a lot of kind of tough spots to, to pitch. So, you know, the Mets are heavily favored. They're in a good spot. Milwaukee's not a great offense, especially versus righties with a 300 Woba. Um, and they strike out 23%. So I, I think Scherzer's in a, in a fine spot. Keaton Wynn is showing up as, uh, the next highest owned. He is only 4k, but this is one thing I need to bring up. Look, 44 pitches last time out, time before that 60, time before that 55. Those are all starts in June. So I think we could see 60, maybe 70 pitches, but he's against a very good offense. He doesn't have a ton of K upside. And I would be shocked if he, you know, makes it into the fifth inning. So uh, I understand wanting the value piece, but I don't think we need to go here. And it just lacks a lot of upside. So I don't love it. Chris Bassett's coming in next highest owned. It's versus the Giants, 22.8% K rate versus righties. Combined K rates, 20%. Uh, the interesting with Bassett is that he, he's been a little inconsistent this year, but he's had extremely good games and ex 
some real, real solid ceiling games. And so he's had a lot of volatility, which is keeping people away from him today. But it makes me kind of interested. The Giants aren't that great of an offense versus righties. 160 ISO, 330 Woba. Uh, they are decent, but, you know, not amazing. The other thing is that Bassett's been good at home. Uh, 21.46 fantasy points in seven home games. 15.27 over you know all the games so he's been better at home i like i don't mind this spot whatsoever uh the one thing is we do have to bring up this bvp stuff it is only 25 plate attempts so take it with a grain of salt but they've hit three home runs and hitting 350 off of him so that is definitely scary to go along with some of his stat cast data which 36 percent hard contact rate his fips not great and that k rate hasn't you know, isn't very high. Uh, with that being said, the games that, you know, he pitches well, his K rate solid. Um, it's the games that he blows up that that K rate just plummets. So which Bassett are we going to get today? I'm not totally sure, but it's not a terrible low owned option. JP France coming in next under over of 10. It is almost a hundred degrees in St. Louis today. Not a great uh, pitching spot whatsoever. He has reverse splits. This Cardinals offense that's going to roll out is a lot of righties. And a lot of guys that hit righties, you know, pretty well. So I don't let, I don't like going to JP France. I do understand if you want to go there. He is only 8K. He's worked deep into games. But just so you guys know, I have hit his under on out so far so 16.5 was the line i got i hit that under i do not think he's gonna go pitch into the sixth inning so um that's just my take the projections are okay on him as a sp2 but that's you know it is what it is so emit Shaheen is next. He's had two decent outings. He is in Colorado. Never know how that's going to go. He is a very highly touted prospect. Uh, he has major swing and miss stuff in the minors. Just hasn't really shown up yet in the major leagues. It might come today. You know, it might not. The Rockies strike out a ton versus righties. But uh, Shaheen does have some pretty quality uh, stuff. And... You know, it's just always tough to uh, pitch in Colorado, but he's going to go pretty much unknown because he's in Colorado. And most of the spots today are really tough pitching spots. So you may be forced to take something like that. Uh, next, we got Tyone Walker. Now, this is probably my third favorite uh, spot on the slate. You know, Scherzer, Bassett, and Walker are probably my three favorite Uh Cubs strike out a little bit. Once again, this isn't a great spot to pitch in. And Walker is averaging 48% less fantasy points while away. But the weather is warm. It's almost 80 degrees in Wrigley. And the wind is blowing slightly out. What we have seen in Wrigley is when it is hitting conditions, the ball flies a lot easier. So this is... You know, while it's not like amazing hitting conditions, it's pretty good hitting conditions. And so the bats in this game will play up a little bit. We do have a 10 point over under game total. Uh, so I understand if you don't want to go here. However, Walker's just been good lately 3.29 FIP over his last five, 24% K rate, combined K rate at 23%. He's done well against this Cubs team in his past. I think there's a lot to like, even though he hasn't been quite as good away. Um, and the good hitting weather, you know, and the good hitting weather only matters if they're really hitting them. So we'll see if they can or not. But the slate as a whole is very hard for DraftKings, uh, especially with just picking pitchers. So if you want to go to these real low loan guys, Wainwright is probably where I would go. Uh, for his career, he's been way better at home. He has struggled to start this year. Uh, but this Astros offense isn't quite what, you know, we've grown to know the Astros offense to be. Also, without Alvarez, you know, it doesn't doesn't help them. But Wainwright's way better at home. He's super cheap. 
and he's not going to have a limit like uh, Win would. You know, he's going to be able to go 100 pitches as long as he doesn't get lit up like he did first the Cubs for seven runs. Uh, so, you know, if you're feeling frisky, you can go to Wayne right here. All right, now let's flip over to FanDuel, see the ownership here. Uh, Scherzer, no surprise, come in one. Bassett is 2, 26% owned. Wainwright, 11%. Walker, 6%. Pretty much agree with how this sets up. Uh, Wainwright's a risky one, but he is super cheap on FanDuel, so you can pretty much do whatever you want hitting-wise. Uh, if you want to get crazy, the crazy one is go to Shaheen at uh, 8,300 and, you know, no owned. And hope he's able to do something in uh, in Colorado, which does happen, just not always. All right, now let's get into the stacks. So the highest highest owned is the Dodgers. No surprise here. Incredibly high owned, as they should be with a five game slate. Uh, they're going against Chase Anderson, who's been terrible. Dodgers. Put up eight runs yesterday. They absolutely can do it again. We got a game total of 12. Highest on the slate by by two runs here. Obviously, the Dodgers are in a good spot. Me, personally, if I want to play the Dodgers, I'm staying away from uh, these stacks with uh, Betts, Freeman, and Smith. Just because that's going to be so high-owned. And I'd probably try and get in some of the lower owned back end of the lineup stuff if I want to stack the Dodgers just to try and get a little bit different while stacking, you know, the team that looks the best on this slate. Uh, next, we got Houston coming in versus Wainwright. We talked about Wainwright being better at home with Houston being so high owned. Wainwright is an ex kind of an enticing leverage option, but he hasn't been good lately. So you can absolutely go to the Astros um, Colorado's coming in, but way less owned. A third own of the ownership as the Dodgers. Same hitting environment. And Shaheen is up, who we he hasn't been that great lately. He hasn't got blown up, but you have no idea what's going to happen in Colorado. It's the first game that he's had in Colorado. Could go either way. Um, all right, now let's go to the projected stuff here. Dodgers, no surprise. Philly, this is the one I'm really interested in. 40% owned, so low owned. He's versus Hendricks. Hendricks can be good, but he also can get blown up. And we talked about the good hitting weather in Philly. So I like them. Giants, super low owned. Bassett hasn't been good lately. So makes a nice, interesting low owned stack for sure. And the Mets are definitely in a decent spot here versus Hauser, 4.74 uh, FIP over his last five, 4.13 over his last 20. He's an okay pitcher, but probably doesn't work deep into the game. And uh, you can get into the bullpen a little bit earlier. Um, all right, who's the value stack that's popping up? Oh, Dodgers back into the lineup. This is kind of what I was talking about, trying to get in some pieces. Um Still using the Dodger stack, but using the back end guys a little bit more. One, they're cheaper and same hitting environment. Coors at altitude, decent weather. Uh, Giants popping up, like that one. Mets, Milwaukee. You know, we talked about all these. Milwaukee's obviously the leverage stack on this uh, slate. If Scherzer gets blown up, he'll need to get really blown up, like a seven run, you know, earned run type deal. But uh, Milwaukee, if that is the case, would look great and could easily take you home with the GPP. It is just, you know, lower chance of it happening because Scherzer is good and everybody knows he is good. So uh, ceiling wise, Philly, Philly's popping up. Houston, Mets, Houston, you know, I like them all. All right, guys, that will do it today. Short one, only five games, really interesting spot, a lot of high game totals. Uh, good luck today, and we'll see you back tomorrow. Adios.